Hey guys, welcome back. A few years ago, I did a video showing how to create huge, fast landscapes in UE4. Unfortunately, UE4 had a maximum world size of 20 kilometers for multiplayer games. But I have exciting news. UE5 Preview 1 has added large world coordinates. In Preview 1, we laid the groundwork for creating absolutely massive worlds in Unreal Engine 5 without the need for rebasing or other tricks. Now what they're describing here is the old world origin shifting system, so we don't need that anymore. By adding initial support for large world coordinates, in addition to moving to the use of double precision values under the hood. Now what are they talking about here? So this is how single precision and double precision floating point numbers are stored. They're actually a three part number, right? So with single precision floating point numbers, we have one bit for the sign, eight bits for the exponent, and 23 bits for the mantisa. Now, what this means is that instead of the number of bits controlling how large the number is, it actually controls how precise the number is. And the reason for that is that you can just keep moving this exponent um, larger, right? And you can slide the number to either be larger values or smaller values, but you still only get these 23 bits of precision. And the reason that this was a problem is that what would happen is that the further that you moved from the origin, the less precise the values would become. And at some points they'd become so imprecise that you couldn't even have any detail in your mesh, right? Because let's say that the difference between one number to the next number was one meter. Well, that would mean the resolution of your mesh is now a meter. And you actually didn't even get that far because animations started messing up even before you lost detail in your mesh. But now they've moved to double precision. And while they did change the exponent from eight to 11, so the number can be slightly larger, that's not really the most important part here. The important part is that the Mantisa went from 23 bits to 52 bits. This is crazy. Um, each additional bit doubles the value um, of the previous. So <laughs> it's a lot more. We're gonna take a look here in a second and see, it's, it's insane. Um, in addition to moving to the use of double precision values under the hood, we focused heavily on performance and memory optimization to help ensure that these changes have very little overhead. So that, that is great to hear. Let's take a look at the code. So here's the old Unreal Engine 4, and you can see that in the engine defines.h, they've defined world max as, this is 20 kilometers, right? If you, if you divide out, the, the units are centimeters. If you divide it out, you end up with 20 kilometers. That was the maximum. They got this world half max, which is the distance you can go from origin. So 10 kilometers from origin, you get a total playable size of 20 kilometers by 20 kilometers. Now let's take a look at UE5. So they still have these old values for UE4, but check out how big these new ones are. So the new world max is 87 million kilometers. So we went from 20 kilometers to 87 million kilometers. Now, in reality, that's not the playable space. And the actual playable space is down uh, below here. And what they've done is, remember I said it was all about precision. And so what they've done is they've said that in their opinion, and this may change based on your game, they consider once your precision goes over 1 16th of a centimeter, then you're going to run into issues. And so when they did that in the old system with the old number uh, with floats, it actually, even though it was a 20 kilometer world, you'd actually start to have trouble once you got to 10 kilometers out. Your animations would start not playing correctly and you'd start to have precision issues. And this is why they had to add world origin shifting even just to get to the 20 kilometer world max to be able to use the playable area. But now they're, they're not using world origin shifting anymore. And now the actual uh, playable area at 1 16th of a centimeter precision is this value here. I've done the math out and here's what it ends up. So you basically end up at 562, almost 563 million kilometers of playable area. This is huge um, for large games. This is going to be awesome. It still doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have to be able to have a world that's 563 million kilometers, depending on your game, because 
if you have a landscape that's not procedurally generated, have fun storing the vertices for 563 million kilometers of space. It's not going to fit on anyone's hard drive. Um, but this is great news for people who maybe wanted to do a space game. Um, you know, in the past, that was a big problem. Now, I think 563 million. It's still small in outer space, uh, but you can still have this concept of areas of 563 million kilometer space, and then you're like hyperspacing between them or some kind of fast travel between them. And so I, I really think it opens that up a lot. Uh, obviously, if you're doing some kind of procedurally generated landscape, you could get to 563 million. Memory is less of an issue now with the fact that you can use world partition to stream things in and out. So that's less of an issue. So you're really less limited by memory, still limited by space on disk. Um, but this is a super exciting change that they have made. And it was totally unexpected. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see anybody talking about it. So this was a great surprise. Okay, that's all I've got for today. Until next time, see ya.